this is the Provoke Prawn, and I've built a number of different cases over the last few years, but in recent times I've been asked a lot the question, will it fit? And by that I mean, will the latest and greatest graphics card from NVIDIA fit into various different cases? And here I have purchased the RTX 4090 from ROG, the Strix white edition which is gorgeous and i spent a lot of money on this so my bank balance is really hurting but i want to show you whether it will fit in various different cases and the considerations before purchasing in terms of powering it also fitting it in the case and the implications of this new power adapter that you can see with multiple different things on it but obviously size matters in this instance because the sheer size of the thing means you've got to consider the length of your case but also the width and depth and what it can handle in various different ways. And you'll see it's quite a chunky beast. So we're going to start off with the Dynamic Mini. This is the Snow Edition, and it's one of the smaller cases that I have. And here you can see that it does actually fit quite nicely in there. There's a little bit of room at the end near the glass. We've got a lot of fans potentially blowing onto it, so it should work pretty well in the mini case, so despite the mini size, the chunky beast of the 4090 will fit in there, which is ideal. And now we're on to the LAN Cool 216 RGB, which theoretically it should fit into as well. I wanted to quickly demonstrate that you could potentially make it look a lot nicer in that vertical mounting position, like I did with the 4070 recently. But here you'll see you can mount it in the standard position and with the RGB streamer cables, it could end up looking pretty nice as well. So that's something to consider. But you'll see again, plenty of space at the end there and below as well. So it should have a nice bit of room to breathe. Now the Air Mini from Lee and Lee once again. And this time, sadly, it won't fit, which is a shame. Interesting that it'll fit in the Mini Snow Edition, but it won't fit in the Air Mini. It's just too long, which is a bit of a downer. So if you've got that case, I'm sorry to tell you, 49, it won't fit in there. But the Dynamic Evo, which is my main daily driver, it will fit in this case. So there is a nice bit of room all round for that. So if you have this case, then it will fit in there quite nicely, which is a bonus. Now, these are all the cases that I happen to have around, which are already built. So those are the ones I can show you. But I thought there'd be some good demos. But one of the other important things to think about is this power adapter. So the 4090 comes with an adapter in the case, which has four cable connections on it, which require eight pin PCIe cables and ideally you want to run single cables not these pigtail ones so you want to just use one of these cables if you are using the pigtail ones and then obviously four of those if possible to get the maximum amount of power and to ensure that it runs smoothly you obviously are then going to end up with a lot of cables in your case even if you have the single power cable that runs from the PSU up into the graphics card you're still going to have four cables coming out of there and it's going to get messy. But also this is obviously going to add some extra width and impact the space that the GPU is going to have in the case. So this is another consideration, not just the length, but also the width of it. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm once again popped it into various different cases. So here you can see it once again in the Lancor 216 and you'll see with that adapter in there, Suddenly we've got another consideration is where those power cables are going to go. Are they going to sit underneath the graphics card and potentially get in the way? But also will the door go on when it's there? So here in the Dynamic Evo, you can see just how much they stick out as standard. And you do need to sort of manipulate them into the case and work out where they're going to go. But you also need to be very careful here because you shouldn't bend this cable too much. People had real issues with it where they ended up bending that cable too much or pulling too much tension on it. And that then resulted in it not being plugged in properly and actually leading to that adapter melting and the GPU potentially catching on fire with some instances a long time ago. So just something to bear in mind. Make sure you don't put too much tension on this cable if you do buy this. So you need to make sure you've got enough room in the case in terms of the depth. Now, obviously, you can check the specs of your case because they do list in the specifications on most cases the maximum length that you can take and also the depth of the case and other things. So you can get an idea of the overall size of the thing, whether it will fit in there. But this is a bit trickier to work out whether the cables are going to be possible to manage and manipulate into there and still have the door closed. And obviously uh, around five inches deep and then more if you need to account for those cables to the door you need to think about that potential length now one solution that you can see that i had plugged in there is to use different cables so the more recent power supply units 
will have that option. This is a Corsair PSU, I'll link to in the description, that enables you to use different power cables, and you can buy fancier ones as well. Also, make sure you've got enough power. This is another consideration. Make sure you've got enough power to power the GPU, because a 4090 requires quite a lot of power in order to run well. I'll leave that detail in the description, but make sure you check out your system specs. So run a PSU calculator with all your system specs to make sure you've got enough power in your power supply unit. I've been asked recently, for example, by a couple of people, whether a 850 watt PSU would be enough to power a 4090. And that really depends on the entirety of your system. What, how many fans you've got in there, how many drives you're running, and your CPU and other things. If you're using a high-end overclock CPU, you're obviously gonna draw more power as well. So that's another consideration, but this, is an alternative cabling option from Corsair, which is a 600 watt cable, which replaces that adapter with the four connections on it. You get a standard out of the box. And then instead you can see it has two eight pin PCIe cables that plug into the power supply unit. And then it has that single 600 watt connection that goes straight into the graphics card. Now you do need to make sure you've got a Corsair power supply unit for this cable. It does have that requirement and you have to have the right one. So check the specs on it, but this is an option potentially. There are alternatives out there. And if you have an ATX 3.0 power supply unit, then you should have this option to use this sort of cable with it. I've done an NZXT one recently, for example, which includes a similar thing, but you'll see that when you go to plug it in, it's a lot cleaner. You only have one cable and it's a bit easier to sort of maneuver around. You don't have to worry about all those excess cables at the front of your case, and it doesn't push up against the glass in the Dynamic Evo, for example. So you've got more room there, it looks neater, and it's a much nicer setup, it gives you plenty of space. So this is another consideration. I'd recommend considering upgrading your power supply unit if you're getting a 4090 anyway, because chances are you've got an older one, maybe one that isn't quite powerful enough. Just consider how much power you need. The other alternative is the RGB streamers from Lian Lee, which I used with the 4070 Ti. Again, I'll link to that video in the description, but you can see these give you plenty of room and they look great as well. Hopefully I've given you some helpful insights into whether it will fit. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.